You will hear a new student, Stefan, talking to an assistant, Anna, at the student union about his membership. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 1 to 6. Hi, can I help you? Um, yeah, I hope so. Um, this is the first time I've been down to the Union. I'm a new international student and I just wondered what to do. Oh, right. Well, normally we ask international students to fill out this form and we put your details on the wall by reception. Then other students can contact you. It's a way for everybody to get to know each other. It can be a bit lonely otherwise. <laughs> oh, I see. What's your name? I'm Anna, by the way. It's Stefan Unger. OK. Well, just write that there next to name uh -huh. and then fill in the rest. All right. Um, what does it mean, degree programme? Oh, uh, just if you are an undergraduate or a postgraduate. Or maybe you're just here for a short course? I'm a postgraduate. Oh. Uh, do I need to say what in? Not really. It's too much detail. But you should put your department so people who have the same interests or problems as you can get in touch. So I'm studying marine construction, so... For department, do I put down the science faculty then? Uh, just your actual department. That must be engineering, no? Oh, I see, yes. Then if you list what you like doing in your free time, not that we ever get any when we're studying, <laughs> and maybe you can meet up with someone socially or to join a club or something. Well, I like lots of things. Shall I just list them? Um, my advice is to just put one or two, like football and films or whatever. Otherwise, you'll get so many invitations, you won't get any time to work. OK. I think I'll just list computer games, as that's my big interest. Oh. I haven't played football for ages. <laughs> I may start to play once I get settled. Now, let's see. Next thing is languages. Yes. We find many of the international students get a bit tired of speaking English all the time. Sometimes they like to speak to someone in their own language. It's up to you. That is a good idea. I presume I don't need to put English down. Oh, no. <laughs> I put um, Italian and French. <laughs> I can only speak German, my mother tongue. OK, well, that's fine. Just put that. Uh... What does accommodation mean? Is that my address? We're trying to find similarities between people and some people live in hall, some are in flats, some are in bedsits. So it helps if you say... I'm in hall, though I'd like to be in a flat, but that won't happen till the end of the first term. Put where you are now. You can always change it later. Uh, then finally, just put your phone number. I haven't really got one. I haven't sorted out a mobile yet. Well, it's going to be difficult for people to contact you then, isn't it? Mm. Why don't you put the union one and we'll take messages for you. OK. It's 02950-659-003. Have you got that? Uh... Yes. OK, then. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 7 to 10.
Oh, I had a couple more questions about the services you've got here. Um, it says there's a photocopier here. Yes. You need to get a card from the shop, and then it's available to all students in the mornings. The union uses it after 1 pm. Okay. I see also the union organizes loads of events. Are they always held here in the union building? It looks big enough. <laughs> If you're interested in something, you should check the poster or our website. In fact, we normally use the Round Theatre, opposite the Conference Centre, for most events, because the sound system is better. Right, I'll do that. Also, I wanted to hire a van. Can I do that through you? Um, no. You need to present a case, really.、Oh. They're not just available for hire to anyone.、Mm. The president said we have to limit who is allowed to hire them. The person you need to see is the transport secretary. She's on the second floor. Okay, thanks. The other thing is, are all the discounts we get with our union card listed on the back of the card? I thought there might be more. No, that's it, I'm afraid. Mainly books, clothes, and music. Though we are currently negotiating to get one on newspapers, so that should be valid from next term. Okay, thanks a lot for your help. Section 2. You will hear a library assistant talking about the library she works in. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 11 to 15. Hi, can I help you? Um, yes. I wanted to join the library. Okay. First of all, let me show you round the library and explain a few things for you. Okay. Now we're here at the main entrance. You can see the reception, which is where you bring back and take out books. And also, we can order books and answer your questions there. Mm hmm. Next to the reception, where you can see those old desks, is where we keep the magazines because you can sit down and read there. They're divided into sections for sciences, geography, arts, etc.、Uh, then, at the back of the library, you can see the section for old books. Next to that is where the books proper start. That used to be the science section. But now on those shelves, you'll find the art section. We had a big reorganisation in the summer, which I think has made it clearer.、Oh. <laughs> the numbering is standard, so you should be able to find what you want quite easily. However, if you can't find something, it probably means it's been borrowed. Okay, then in the corner next to the reference section, Is where we thought it was quietest, and away from the phones and printers and things. So we've put the study desks there. They all have computer access if you need it for your laptop. No.、Oh. We do ask that you don't just read magazines there, though. Okay.、Uh, then there's the reference section, where you can look up the files. Then, as we come back to the main entrance. Is the next section where we used to have the languages? It got very busy and noisy, so when we moved everything round, we decided to put the law books here. Also, because it's a smaller section, it fits quite well here.、Ah. Okay, then we're back at the main entrance. Over there, by reception, there's a door that goes to the extension.
and we have further sections such as languages and study desks through there. So you could have a look round when we've finished. Then just between reception and the door here is where we decided to put the computers, but the computer magazines are in the magazine section. As we found, too many went missing here. <laughs> okay, is that everything? You now have thirty seconds to read questions sixteen to twenty. That's great, thanks. Can you just tell me a bit about borrowing and the rules and whatever? Of course. Over the last two months, we've been introducing a new system for this, and you can now take books out for six weeks. That's generally enough for most people. We usually get books back within thirty days. Of course, you may decide to renew the period. You used to have to come in to get the book stamped, because we don't like doing it over the phone, as there's no record of it. But now you can do all that via email.、Oh. If you do forget to renew, then we do make a charge. I'm afraid that helps our costs, of course, but we do insist on it. The good news is that there is only one charge. I know some libraries charge one pound for one week, and then it goes up with each week. It's late. We ask for one pound fifty, as we think that's high enough to stop people being overdue. <laughs> the other thing you may want to know is what you do about books that are not on the shelves. We do have a system for reserving them. All you have to do is fill in a yellow form behind those blue ones on the desk,、uh -huh. and give it to someone at reception. We'll let you know when it comes in. Also, sometimes you will need a journal article that we don't have, but can get from other libraries. So we offer an ordering service if you need it. Now, if you'd like to fill in this form here. Now turns to part three. Part three. And welcome to this morning's lecture on transport. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Good morning, and welcome to this morning's lecture on transport. What I'll be doing today is comparing forms of transport in different countries to see how forms of transport are affected by factors such as geographical landscape and economic development. My focus will be on countries in South America, Europe, and Asia. The first country I'd like to look at is Colombia, which is in South America. This is a country where geography plays an important role. Due to the huge amount of mountains and forests in this country, travelling by air is crucial. I don't know if many of you realise this fact, but Colombia was the first country to establish a commercial airline, and in so doing, they made aviation history. Today. There are more than 400 airports in Colombia for domestic flights, which highlights the point I made earlier that air travel is a vital means of transport in this country. Colombia also has a road network of about 48,000 kilometres, 
linking Colombia to Venezuela and Ecuador. Transport by road is important for trade as well as tourism. Apart from this, there is also a railway system, but it is in need of modernization. The other means of transport is by steamers, with the Magdalena being the main waterway. Now let's turn to Colombia's neighbour, Venezuela. Once again, we see that internal flights are an important means of transport, as like Colombia, Venezuela has remote areas where flying is the easiest means of travelling from A to B. Trains are not popular, and most of the railway lines are in the highlands, as this is where the iron ore mines are. Trains are an efficient means of transporting the iron ore from the mines to the factories. Thus, we can see how transport and the economy are interrelated. Ships are also used extensively in this country, and there are many ports. The main seaports being Puerto Cabello and Guanta. Turning now to Europe, Belgium is a country that boasts one of the most compact railway systems worldwide. Inland waterways or canals are also an important means of transport, transporting both freight and people. Belgium also has the third largest seaport in the world, namely Antwerpen. Air travel is also important, although this is not linked to geographical terrain, as is the case in the South American countries we've already looked at. Next, I'd like to look at the United Kingdom. Like Belgium, the UK has inland waterways around 4,000 kilometres, yet only about 17% of these are used for commercial transport. The main inland port is Manchester, and the chief seaport is London, with Southampton taking second place. Air travel is extensive in this country, and there are around 150 airports, the most famous being Heathrow. However, about 90% of passengers in the UK travel by road. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Finally, I'd like to look at two Asian countries. China is a country which reveals how geographical size affects transport development. Roads and railways are widely used, and this has led to a huge amount of bridges being built, such as the Yangtze Bridge, which is probably the most widely known. The Yangtze Bridge is 1.6 kilometres long and is built on two levels. The upper tier is for cars and pedestrians, while the lower is for trains. Railways are especially important, and over 80% of freight and passengers are transported by rail. With such a high proportion of people using trains, it is not surprising that governments in countries like China are prepared to invest in the railway system. Obviously, a fast and effective train service will encourage businesses and the general public to continue using it. The last country I'm going to mention is Japan, which has one of the most advanced transport systems in the world. The railway system is highly developed, and the Takedo Railway, connecting Tokyo and Osaka, has trains that can travel up to 250 kilometres per hour. Ships are also a vital means of transport in both international and domestic areas. To summarise, we can see that transport varies throughout the world, yet the importance of transport networks, be they air, sea, rail or road, cannot be underestimated. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear part of a lecture about how adults and babies communicate. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Hi, I'm Emma Bailey, and today I'm going to be talking baby talk. Hopefully, you'll find the subject interesting rather than infantile. I'd like to start by getting you to imagine a scenario: you're in an office or at a family gathering when a mother comes in with her young baby. Like everyone else, you want to see the mother and baby, and you probably want to talk to the baby. How do you do this? What kind of language do you use? Recent research has shown that adults all talk to babies in similar ways. They repeat phrases over and over again in a high-pitched sing-song voice with long vowel sounds, and if they ask questions, they exaggerate their intonation. Researchers have discovered that this kind of language, which they have called motherese, is used by adults all over the world when they talk to babies. And according to a new theory, motherese forms a kind of framework for the development of language in children. This baby talk, so the theory goes, itself originated as a response to another aspect of human evolution: walking upright. In contrast to other primates. Humans give birth to babies that are relatively undeveloped. So, whereas a baby chimpanzee can hold on to its four-legged mother and ride along on her back shortly after birth, helpless human babies have to be held and carried everywhere by their upright mothers. Having to hold on to an infant constantly would have made it more difficult for the mother to gather food. In this situation, researchers suggest. Human mothers began putting their babies down beside them while gathering food, to pacify an infant distressed by this separation. The mother would talk to her offspring and continue her search for food. This remote communication system could have marked the start of motherese, as mothers increasingly relied on their voices to control the emotions of their babies and later the actions of their mobile juveniles. Words emerged from the jumble of sounds, and became conventionalized across human communities, ultimately producing language. Not all anthropologists, however, accept the assumption that early human mothers put their children down when they were looking for food. They point out that even modern parents do not do this. Instead. They prefer to hold their babies in their arms or carry them around in slings. They suggest that early mothers probably made slings of some kind, both for ease of transportation and to keep their babies warm by holding them close to their bodies. If this was the case, they would not have needed to develop a way of comforting or controlling their babies from a distance. It's not only anthropologists, but also linguists, who challenge this explanation for how language developed. They say that although the motherese theory may account for the development of speech, it does not explain the development of grammar. Nor they say does it explain how the sounds that mothers made acquired their meaning. Most experts believe that language is a relatively modern invention that appeared in the last one hundred thousand years or so. But if the latest theory is right, baby talk, and perhaps fully evolved language. Was spoken much earlier than that. We know that humans were walking upright one and a half million years ago, 
This means that mothers may have been putting their babies down at this time and communicating with them in motherese. We can be sure that this is not the end of the story, as anthropologists and linguists will continue to investigate the origins of this most human of abilities, language. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.